I hope everyone's doing good this morning. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. I am presenting you material here on a pre-calculus topic by a request from a viewer, periodic functions and a good application of periodic functions which would be simple harmonic motion. Before we look here at this technical definition of a periodic function, very simply understand this. Let's use a cosine as our basic trigonometric function. I have a specific point over here and I'm going to call this x. If I go 2 pi period away plus 2 pi and I look at this point it's going to be x plus 2 pi and then if this continues on and I do another 2 pi I have a specific point landing here will be x plus 2 pi plus 2 pi. If I were to do the cosine of this value it would be equal to the cosine of that value and it would be equal to the cosine of this value because everything repeats and that's just how it is and I have not drawn this entirely to scale but you can see your cosine function would continue like that. Anyhow, each of these points are repetitive points in terms of their outcome. You put these into your calculator and you determine their cosine, the output is always the same. If you have a specific point x plus p, where p represents a specific positive constant, it will always be equal to f of x. That is, you're putting this specific point into your function and it would be equal to exactly what you would expect from your function for all the values of x in the domain of that function. You are looking for this very small positive constant or the smallest positive constant and if this were to be the case, you are looking here at a periodic function. The smallest such number p is the period, and I can show you exactly what that means, this last statement, the smallest such number p is the period, by means of a quick statement. And that statement is something I've already alluded to. Let theta be equal to 60, which we can represent in radians as pi over 3. I'm interested in determining cosine of pi over 3. It's a certain value. You can use trigonometric ratios or your calculator and come up with a good value. But then you can start adding multiples of a certain constant and let that constant be 2 pi. This value here will be equal to that. And add yet another round, pi over 3 plus 2 pi plus 2 pi. This will be equal to that and it will be equal to cosine pi over 3. And here, pi over 3 plus 2 pi plus 2 pi and another 2 pi. When you simplify this, you're really looking here at a cosine pi over 3 plus 4 pi. Here you're looking at cosine pi over 3 plus 6 pi. What are the constants you're seeing here? You're seeing a 2 pi, here you're seeing a 4 pi, 6 pi, and I told you you're always looking for that smallest positive constant which would represent your period. It's not 6 pi, it's not 4 pi, it's 2 pi. This right here is your period. The smallest positive constant that you're always in the search for, for sine and cosine, it's 2 pi or 360 degrees. 2 pi radians, 360 degrees, and that's what we're talking about. You want to be looking for that smallest positive constant which brings in that repetitive nature and the same values that you would be expecting. Graphically, you know, you can put it right over here. You're doing a 2 pi, you're landing here. You're doing another 2 pi, you're still landing here. And another 2 pi, you're still landing there. Hence, the values are always the same for periodic functions when you land at that specific point. Keep all of this in mind. Periodic functions also have what is called translational symmetry. It's a new term for many students, but it exists and periodic functions such as sine and cosine, tangent, cotangent, they all have this. Consider the sine, just a single period of it from 1 to minus 1. This here represents a single period of your sine wave. You can exactly take this and translate it and replicate the graph. You can take that same segment, translate it and replicate the graph. Translation symmetry allows you to take a single period you are looking for that smallest positive constant which here is p. You take that positive constant you can keep translating it in either direction. You can go in this direction as well and you can generate the entire graph for that function over its entire domain using just a single segment or a period of that graph and translating it in both directions. That's called translational symmetry of a periodic function. You just need this basic unit and from here you can develop the rest of that function graph. The more interesting aspect of these periodic functions are their applications, particularly simple harmonic motion, which relates to an object that is in motion, but in a repetitive form of motion. Simple harmonic motion examples would be like a wave-like motion, or object which is oscillating back and forth, rotating, swinging, vibrating, all of that comes in the topic of simple harmonic motion. We will give you here just a brief introduction to this. We have here a spring under ideal conditions from which a certain mass is hanging right over here. The ideal conditions would be there's no friction here, this spring has no mass, no air resistance, air drag, none of that, such that if you were to pull this and activate it, it would continue on forever like it would in a vacuum. 
you can picture all of that in your mind and then consider here a resting position or we can call this an equilibrium position of zero centimeters. You know what would happen is if you were to pull this down right here and then release it, it would start bobbing up and down. We can imagine and give some numbers. We've pulled it down eight centimeters and then it'll bob upwards eight centimeters. These are the positions you would see. This here would be your maximum negative displacement and this here would be your maximum positive displacement. But all of this can be mathematically shown by means of this equation d is equal to a sine wt. But this wt is a lowercase omega or you can say d is equal to a cosine this omega variable t which has to do with angular frequency. When you're looking at this what would represent a period here? What would represent a cycle of movement? If I'm pulling this down and I release it, the cycle of movement would be, it's starting from down here, going up and then coming down. That's a full cycle. Or if I pulled it up and then I released it, it's going from up, coming down, then going back up. That right there represents a complete cycle. That complete cycle is then your period. But let's bring some mathematics over here. We know we're looking here at a certain period, but I have to give you that time. The time for this object to complete that one cycle, imagine it to be six seconds. I have a certain distance or displacement away from the resting position, which is eight up or eight down. That's always in terms of an amplitude, an absolute value. I know my amplitude here is eight. I know my period over here is equal to six. But this right here is not your period. It's part of your period. How do you look at your period? Well, you need an equation, period. I'll symbolize this which can also be symbolized as a capital T is equal to 2 pi over this omega variable. Also recognize frequency is equal to the reciprocal of your period, which you can say reciprocal of that, which you can say as your omega variable divided by 2 pi because you're flipping that around. Now, if I wanted to develop an equation, my first goal is, am I using this or this? Well, it depends. If your situation is being started such that at time t equals zero, you are at an equilibrium position, then you're using sine because you know sine goes to the origin at right here at this point, you have a zero comma zero. But if at time t equals zero, you're not at your equilibrium position, but you're in an activated position, then you're looking at cosine because here you're always having a zero comma one. And I'm just using this one. It could have been zero comma a here in terms of the amplitude, but you can see the difference. Time t equals zero, you're in an equilibrium position. Time t equals zero, you're not in, at an equilibrium position. You're either activated position. If this spring were pulled up and then released, you know you're not at your equilibrium position. If the start of the experiment is from down here, you know you're not at your equilibrium position. But if the start of the experiment is right here, you are at your equilibrium position, then you would use sine. For the purposes of this example, let's imagine we're using sine over here and let's develop our equation. You would have here d is equal to a, which we now know is to be 8, sine omega t. But we have to determine this omega by means of this. I've given you your period 6 seconds. 6 is equal to 2 pi over omega. Solve for that. 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. That's what I have. So this equation will become d is equal to 8 sine pi over 3t. You can also say y equals that. d and y are synonymous. I like to use d. If I want to determine the frequency of this entire motion, how can I do this? I will take this equation 2 pi over w and I'll flip it around. It will be w over 2 pi and I now know what my w is, my omega. I have a bad habit of saying w. It should really be saying omega or my angular frequency pi over 3 over 2 pi which would be basically a one over six. What does this one over six mean? It means cycle per second. I'm doing one sixth of a cycle per second. That's a frequency. An entire cycle takes six seconds. So each second I'm doing one sixth of that cycle. And that right there is my frequency. But you're seeing how everything comes into play. These are your equations that you see right over here. And here your period and of course right over here your frequency but I'll lay these out for you in a slightly larger manner for the remainder of questions we will look at in this video. Let's start with these two questions we have to develop the equations. Here's question one, question two. Let's look at question one. We have an object which is undergoing simple harmonic motion. These are its parameters. Displacement is zero at time equals zero. Amplitude is four centimeters. You can say maximum positive or negative displacement it's four. Period to complete one cycle is two seconds. How can you represent that in the equation? Look right here, at time zero, we have zero displacements. We're thinking about sine. 
your equation would be d is equal to a, your amplitude would be a 4. You know you've determined its sine by means of this. It'll go right here through the origin if you were to graph it, sine, and you need to determine the variable wt. And you can, period is equal to 2 pi over w. I've told you the time needed to complete a cycle is 2. This time is also your period. 2 is equal to 2 pi over this variable. Variable is equal to 2 pi over 2, which is equal to pi. Suddenly your equation is complete, 4 sine pi t is equal to d, or you can say y is equal to 4 sine pi t, it doesn't matter. But this question here is done, 4 sine pi t. Now let's look at the second question. In this one we have displacement which is 3, it's at a maximum high point. Maximum positive displacement at time t equals 0. So you know in terms of a graph you're looking at something which is coming right over here through the 0 comma 3 so you're looking at a cosine function and you have an amplitude 3 so you can say d is equal to 3 cosine we know that now we have to determine that omega variable 1.5 is equal to 2 pi over this variable variable is equal to 2 pi over 1.5 which you can do as 2 pi over 3 over 2 and that's 4 pi over 3 so you know it's 3 cosine 4 pi over 3 t and this here would be our equation. You can, if you want, write it as this. y is equal to 3 cosine 4 pi over 3 t. Because here the d can represent y. If you were to graph it, you know you're looking here at a y axis which would represent your d. You're looking at a time over here which would represent the x axis, all of that. But d and y here would be synonymous and this right here would be good. 3 cosine 4 pi over 3 t. Let's look at this question here with regards to a tuning fork. You hit a tuning fork and it vibrates back and forth. It's vibrating here at a frequency of 264 vibrations per second. This is a certain equation which you can use to describe that simple harmonic motion. We have to find this variable. How would you go about doing it? Well, you know, here frequency is always equal to your period, which you can symbolize as a T. There's nothing wrong with that as it's reciprocal. If I know this right here is 264, 264 is equal to the reciprocal of your period, then therefore T must be equal to the reciprocal of your frequency, 1 over 264. Bring that right over here. 2 pi over that variable, omega variable, your angular frequency is equal to 1 over 264, and you're solving for this variable. It's going to be 264 times 2 pi, and this right here will give you variable value. 264 times 2, it'll be 528 pi. Now, if you want to put everything here with regards to the equation, you can. D is equal to A. We don't know what A is, but we can keep it as A. And it's going to be sine 528 pi t. And that right here could be a equation of this model. You just have to determine what that amplitude is, but we don't have enough information to determine that amplitude, but that equation right there would be good. Let this be our last question. We have a certain person or an object on a high wave, and they're just stuck out in the middle of the ocean. The time start measuring from right over here, the object is going to its resting position, then coming down, then the, obviously the cycle will repeat as the waves are moving. The person will buoy up and down, or the object will buoy up and down. The maximum displacement from the resting position is plus 2 here, and it's a minus 2 in this direction. If you're starting here from the top, going down, and then coming back up, that time here is 10 seconds. That would be a complete cycle. Well, we have to utilize all of this to develop an equation. What's the first thing you want to do is determine which of these equations apply. Since at time t equals 0, we're looking at an object which is already in a displaced position. You're looking at a cosine function. That's what you have. So our equation will be d is equal to a cosine, the variable t, omega. What will be our a value? It's your amplitude here, which is 2 cosine, and now we have to determine this. This right here represents the time for a complete cycle, which is also your period. 10 is equal to 2 pi over your variable, solve for your variable, is equal to 2 pi over 10, which will be pi over 5. And now you're pretty much done. Pi over 5t would represent this equation, which you can also write in terms of y is equal to that. But I like to keep it d because it's actually part of your equation. It talks about displacement. And this right here, an object or a person on a wave is in simple harmonic motion. Anyhow, this is what we wanted to represent. If I were to ask you what's the frequency over here, you can do that. It's going to be equal to the reciprocal of your this item right over here. And you can write that as this. Your variable, omega variable, divided by 2 pi. You would have pi over 5, which is what we determined it to be, divided by 2 pi. That will be 1 over 10. It's doing 1 tenth of a cycle 
per second. It's taking 10 seconds to complete a cycle. So each second is doing one tenth of that cycle. And this right here is your frequency and we're done. That's all I'm going to show you here in this video. I like to keep things mathematically oriented and this is what I've done in here for you in this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.